one. Let's go to the next one. We've got a 200 gram projectile that starts, it's fired with a velocity of 900 meters per second towards the center of the 15 kilogram wooden block, which rests on a rough surface. If the projectile penetrates and then emerges from the block, but now it has a velocity of 300 meters per second, uh, then determine the velocity of the block af just after the projectile emerges, okay? Then how long does the block slide? So then the block is going and it's sliding. We'll, we'll consider the second half of the problem in just a minute. But first, let me, let me just think, um, immediately before and immediately after the collision, I want to do uh, momentum right momentum is we do conservation of momentum for that collision and then after we do that then we'll pick up the second half of the problem which is okay now it's sliding let's see how far it goes or actually not how far it goes but how long uh the time that the block slides on the rough surface before it comes to rest and they give us the kinetic uh, coefficient of friction all right so <clears throat> just before and after the collision, any momentum plus any impulse equals the final momentum. Uh, should I do this for the block? Should I do this for the projectile? Or we could do it for both of them together. We, we could, we could kind of sum up all of the momentum before plus any outside forces any outside impulses equals the momentum final so i'm going to do you know the well i think i'll call it a projectile projectile and block so the momentum of both the projectile and the block okay before we get too far how about that impulse right here there is an impulse of the bullet on the block, but there is also an impulse of the block on the bullet. They are equal and opposite. And so they're kind of like an internal force. I'm not going to consider that for this equation since I'm calculating the momentum of both of them. Right? I've got the momentum of the projectile and the block. Since I'm considering both of them, the impulse between the two, which there is an impulse between the two, but the impulse between the two is equal and opposite, right? The bullet has an impulse off the block this way, but the block slows down the bullet. It has an impulse of the, on the bullet that way. Okay, so in this problem, because I'm doing the momentum of both of these, there's no outside impulse different from the previous problem the previous problem we we didn't we weren't told hey what's the velocity of that club what's the mass of that club if we were then we could we could kind of do it that way but with this one we're told the masses and velocities of both of those objects so the impulse is internal it's equal to zero okay so this comes really pretty easy the mo momentum of the projectile the momentum of the block equals the mo they're really just transferring momentum momentum is conserved okay so initially initially the bullet which is 0.2 kilograms is going at 900 meters per second and initially the block is at rest afterwards the bullet is now going at 300 and the block is now going at what final velocity that and that really simplified down to a pretty easy equation but we had to figure out how to get there and does that make sense this one, the math, would tell me the velocity of the block is 8 meters per second. 
Uh, now, I said direction matters. I should be a lot more careful, but uh, it, I think everything was in the X, right? Velocity was in the X, initial, final. This, this is my X equation. Uh, there's not much going on in the Y direction. All right, but that is the velocity, not like the final velocity. That's the velocity just right after the collision. So now, um, I've got part B. How long, how far does, no, how long, how much time does it take for the block that starts at eight and is sliding on a rough surface uh, to come to rest? How long does it take it to uh, come to rest? We actually have a couple of options here. We have a couple of options. Uh, we could sum the forces equals mass times acceleration. You know, draw a free body diagram, sum the forces. I think the only force is friction. We could find the acceleration. If we're lucky, I think this one is a constant acceleration. Uh, and then we can use constant acceleration to find the time it takes to go from eight to zero. Uh, I'm about to write this, but I'm going to cross it out. Uh, I don't want you to do conservation of energy uh, because of friction. I don't like doing conservation of energy problems when there's friction because energy is not conserved. We're not keeping track of the heat. Uh, and many times it's negligible, but don't use conservation of energy, at least in my class, for part B for this problem when there is friction. Uh, but we can use conservation of momentum. It, it doesn't really seem like a collision, uh, but friction, um, if you've got friction slowing something down, uh, we, we can use conservation of momentum. And it's especially helpful for a few reasons. Many times the friction is a constant, mu k times n, right? And if n is constant, then many times that force of friction is a constant force. And so the impulse is FT. So if we want to find the time for some of these problems with a constant force, uh, then we can use conservation momentum. If you use either of these methods, you would get the exact same answer. Maybe one day or we do glass board problem, half the table can use one, half the table can do the other. But anyway, <clears throat> for Kinetic friction problems, you can use conservation of momentum. Let's do that and see what happens. Now I'm only looking at the block MV plus FT. And this FT, this external FT, could be the due to friction. Equals the MV of the block. I'm only looking at the block. The projectile has come and gone, it's left us, left, gave us eight meters per second. So now I'm looking at the block. It is 15 kilograms going at eight meters per second. This F is a force of friction and it is a constant force. Uh, let's see, what is this force of friction? Mu K times N, this would be 0.2 times n. I haven't exactly solved n. It wouldn't take but a second to solve it. n and the weight is 15, 9.81. Summing the forces in the y direction. It's not accelerating in the y direction. So, so n is 15 times 9.81. So here we go. The force of friction is 0 0.2 times 15 times 9.81. 9.81. All right, and I made a mistake. Let's see if anybody can catch it. But so there's the impulse. Well, I'm making lots of mistakes. Uh, times time. And I can do force times time because it's a constant force. Equals, and so we're trying to find out when it comes to rest right here. All right, does anybody see my mistake? 
Yeah, yeah. Should it be negative? Yeah, it should be negative because this is my x equation. This is my x equation. And that force of friction was in the negative. I probably would have noticed something because my time was about to come out to a negative time, right? Impossible. Uh, but sometimes it's not that easy to see. Sometimes you'll just get a value and you'll think you did everything right. Direction matters. Direction matters. Is it to the right or is it to the left? So this, this velocity was to the right, but this force was to the left. And so then I've got time, 4.08 seconds. 4.08 seconds. And we could try, maybe one time, I don't have it, but if we tried summing the force equals mass on acceleration, we'd get that exact time. And I bet if we tried conservation of energy, uh, we'd get something similar. If time is, is, is time in our conservation of energy problem, though, actually, uh, we, we could calculate the distance for that one. And then we'd have to kind of use some other equations to find the time. Yeah, that, that's another reason we wouldn't use conservation of energy, right? Is time in our conservation of energy equations? Don't help me out here. It's hard to think up here. MGH, 1 of kx squared, 1 of mv squared. It's not really in there, so we'd have to use other methods. Okay, let's step back and look at what we did. We did uh, collision, conservation of energy for before and after the collision, and then we actually did conservation of energy again for the uh, friction. So friction was definitely an outside impulse right the ground we're not thinking about the mass of the ground the velocity of the ground so that's an outside impulse but if it's the impulse between the two then it's internal don't don't put it in your equation when you're considering both of them don't put it in your equation when you've got both of the masses and velocities in your equation but and i did this on a test maybe part B, part C, I might ask, okay, what is the collision of, of the bullet on the block? How could you find that? You would do a momentum equation, but only, only consider maybe the block. And then if you're only doing the mass and velocity of the block, then yes, that bullet is an outside impulse or only consider the bullet, you would get the same impulse, equal and opposite. Makes sense? It's kind of like those internal forces. Once you open it up and only look at three by diagram of one, then you would include any internal forces between the two. Let's look at the next 